Personal protective equipment is essential for protecting workers against dangers in the workplace. Many accidents can be avoided by employers providing proper equipment and employees using the equipment at all appropriate times. Employers must protect employees from workplace hazards such as machines, hazardous substances, and dangerous work procedures that can cause injury. Employers must use all feasible engineering and work practice controls to eliminate and reduce hazards, then use appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, if these controls do not eliminate the hazards. When PPE is required to protect employees, it must be provided by the employer at no cost to employees, except for specific items, such as safety toe footwear, prescription safety eyewear, everyday clothing and weather-related gear, and logging boots. Some examples of PPE include safety glasses, goggles, face shields, hard hats, safety shoes, gloves, vests, earplugs, or earmuffs. To establish a PPE program, first assess the workplace to determine if hazards are present or are likely to be present which necessitate the use of protective equipment. Once the proper PPE has been selected, the employer must provide training to each employee who is required to use PPE. Employees required to use PPE must be trained to know at least the following. When PPE is necessary, what type of PPE is necessary, how to properly put on, take off, adjust, and wear any PPE, limitations of the PPE, and proper care, maintenance, and disposal of the equipment. Each affected employee must demonstrate an understanding of the required training and the ability to use PPE properly before being allowed to perform work requiring the use of PPE. When the employee does not have the required skill and understanding, retraining is required. Written certification of completion of training is required. Employers must provide eye protection for employees whenever they are exposed to potential eye injuries during their work. Common causes of eye injuries include dust and other flying particles, such as metal shavings or sawdust molten metal that might splash, acids that might splash, blood and other potentially infectious body fluids that might splash, spray or splatter, and intense light such as that created by welding and lasers. Safety spectacles are made with metal or plastic safety frames. Most operations require side shields, Safety spectacles are used for moderate impact from particles produced by such jobs as carpentry, woodworking, grinding, and scaling. Goggles protect eyes, eye sockets, and the facial area immediately surrounding the eyes from impact, dust, and splashes. Some goggles fit over corrective lenses. Welding shields protect eyes from burns caused by infrared or intense radiant light and protect face and eyes from flying sparks or metal spatter produced during welding, brazing, soldering, and cutting. Laser safety goggles protect eyes from intense concentrations of light produced by lasers. Face shields protect the face from dusts and potential splashes or sprays of hazardous liquids. Face shields do not protect employees from impact hazards. Head protection should be used to prevent against head injuries. Common causes of head injuries include falling objects, bumping one's head against fixed objects, such as exposed pipes or beams, or contact with exposed electrical conductors. Hard hats require a hard outer shell and a shock-absorbing lining. The lining should incorporate a headband and straps that suspend the shell from one to one and a quarter inches away from the user's head to provide shock absorption during impact and ventilation during wear. 
Employers must make sure that hard hats continue to provide sufficient protection to employees by training employees in the proper use and maintenance of hard hats, including daily inspection. Remove hard hats from service if the suspension system shows signs of deterioration or no longer holds the shell away from the employee's head. Also make sure the brim or shell is not cracked, perforated, or deformed, or show signs of exposure to heat, chemicals, or ultraviolet light. Limit use of paints and stickers, which can hide signs of deterioration in the hard hat shell. Paints, paint thinners, and some cleaning agents can weaken the shell of the hard hat and may eliminate electrical resistance. Employee exposure to excessive noise depends upon several factors. How loud is the noise as measured in decibels? What is the duration of each employee's exposure to noise? Do employees move between separate work areas with different noise levels? Is noise generated from one source or multiple sources? Generally, the louder the noise, the shorter the exposure time before you must provide hearing protection. Employers must implement feasible engineering controls and work practices before resorting to PPE, such as earmuffs, earplugs, or canal caps. If engineering and work practice controls do not lower employee noise exposure to acceptable levels, then employers must provide employees with appropriate PPE. Safety footwear should be used to protect employees from injury. Some common causes of injury include heavy objects such as barrels or tools that might roll onto or fall on employees' feet, sharp objects such as nails or spikes that might pierce the soles or uppers of ordinary shoes, molten metal that might splash on feet, hot or wet surfaces, and slippery surfaces. Safety shoes have impact-resistant toes and heat-resistant soles that protect against hot surfaces common in roofing, paving, and hot metal industries. Some have metal insoles to protect against puncture wounds. Safety shoes may be designed to be electrically conductive for use in explosive atmospheres or non-conductive to protect from workplace electrical hazards. Metatarsal guards are a part of the shoes or strapped to the outside of shoes to protect the instep from impact and compression. Hand protection should be used to minimize the risk of hand injuries. The types of hand injuries to guard against include burns, bruises, abrasions, cuts, punctures, fractures, amputations, and chemical exposures. The nature of the hazards and the operation to be performed will determine your selection of gloves. The variety of potential hand injuries may make selecting the appropriate pair of gloves more difficult than choosing other protective equipment. Take care to choose gloves designed for the particular circumstances of your workplace. Glove manufacturers can provide valuable assistance. Body protection should be used to protect workers against common causes of injuries, such as intense heat, splashes of hot metals and other hot liquids, impacts from tools, machinery, and materials, cuts, hazardous chemicals, contact with potentially infectious materials, and radiation. Protective clothing comes in a variety of materials, each suited to particular hazards. Conduct your hazard assessment and identify potential sources of bodily injury. Different materials will protect against different chemical and physical hazards. When chemical or physical hazards are present, check with the clothing manufacturer to make sure that the material selected will provide protection from the specific chemical or physical hazards in your workplace. In summary, Employers must implement a PPE program where they assess the workplace for hazards, use engineering and work practice controls to eliminate or reduce hazards before using PPE, 
select and provide appropriate PPE at no cost to employees to protect them from hazards that cannot be eliminated. Inform employees why the PPE is necessary and when it must be worn. Train employees how to use and care for their PPE and how to recognize deterioration and failure. Require employees to wear selected PPE in the workplace. This has been a production of Federal Safety Solutions. For more information, please visit fssamerica.com.